thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Um, I'm very grateful. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I was born in Iraq uh, into a Kurdish family or, um, as a Muslim. Now, the time that I grew up in was very different. It was, I was born during a war with Iraq and Iran, and I lived in my lifetime, I lived through three wars. And as you can imagine, living through war is not really a pleasant experience. Um, it was very difficult, a lot of hardship, a lot of suffering. I witnessed around me all the time growing up. And um, I always wondered, I always asked God, how come there's so much suffering in the world? Like, if there is a God, why is he not doing anything about it? Is this the work of Satan? Or is this the work of God? Which is it? I always wondered. And I, my family were pretty religious, um, quite um, conservative Muslims. So I used to read Quran a lot. And I would meditate on it, and I would try to get answers from it. And when I didn't, then I would go to my teachers or my family asking questions. And um, a lot of times, they wouldn't have answers for me. And they would just tell me, you know what? It's not good to ask too many questions. So <laughs> just believe. It's better that you just believe because um, in Islam, God is very, uh, he's more like a tyrant God. Like he makes the rules and he just expects people to just follow. And uh, th so that was my experience. I tried to bury my, um, I tried to bury those questions and just live through life not knowing, not having the answers. But I got to a stage where I felt really lost. I felt like there was, um, there was just, life felt really meaningless. And I always wondered like, Surely there's more to life than just living like that, like just witnessing a lot of hardship and suffering, or even if we don't have hardship or suffering, it just felt something was missing. And um, I was desperately asking God for guidance. And I remember distinctly, I was reading Quran and I was trying to search for answers in there and I felt so distant from it that it was like a strange book to me. And I couldn't, I couldn't see um, myself living that life anymore. So I begged God and I said, please guide me. Like, I, don't, I need some answers. And it wasn't long after I said that prayer that I had, a, I had a dream. And when I woke up from that dream, it felt like it was a very profound dream. And I had the strongest urge to go and read the Bible. So I asked a friend of mine and he gave me a pictured Bible that I started reading and the more I read, the more I wanted to read. It connected a lot of the dots for me and it gave me a better idea of who God is and what is his plan for humanity and why we live in the world that we live in. Um, so it, um, it was, the message that I was reading was very powerful and profound that I couldn't turn away from it. So I decided to follow that path and because majority of the friends that I was hanging out with were Catholics, so I uh, naturally ended up in the Catholic Church and I studied the doctrine, uh, did the, course, the courses, and I got baptized in the Catholic Church in my mid-20s. And um, it was all good. It was the, the start of the journey was really good. They told me when I first became Catholic, they said that when you are a new believer, you're like a new baby. God wants to spoil you, so please ask, ask him for whatever you want. Don't be shy, pray constantly, and God will answer. And they were right, they were actually right. My life of faith in Christianity started my prayers. They were like constantly like that. Like I pray and God answers, I pray and God answers, and I was just like, whoa, you know, this God is real. So I, um, my relationship with God got a lot stronger and stronger from then on. However, it was still not enough for me. I always felt there's more, there needs to be more substance to it. It can't be just like, okay, I pray and God answers my prayer. Uh, okay, I believe that Jesus is the savior, but it wasn't really, didn't really mean that much to me. Um, I was much better off as a Christian than I was without being a Christian, but there were still a lot of things missing in my life. I still felt God, that life was meaningless and I was searching for uh, fulfillment and satisfaction in all the wrong places. Ended up in wrong relationships, ended up in substance abuse and all the kind of things and just nothing was satisfying enough for me. 
And uh, so I turned to God again, knowing that he's a merciful God and he answers prayers. I once again prayed and prayed and begged God, please show me the way, um, even though I know that you're real and that you're the true God that I need to follow, but how come I'm still feeling empty and not satisfied enough? Um, I wanted to know what is God's plan for me, why he created me in this world, and what is his plan for humanity, what was the purpose behind all of it, so that I know what I need to do and how to live my life knowing that I am living it according to his will. And so as I was praying for those things, at that time I had already moved to Melbourne and I was doing a master degree at Melbourne University. And at the same time I was researching to do, uh, searching, asking around about doing a theology study because I really wanted to know the Bible and I wanted to know what it, uh, who God is and what he wants of us. And I was, uh, I was at the university just minding my own business and I got approached by um, a Christian group, by a couple of people. They looked, they looked innocent and harmless and uh, all they wanted to do was to talk about God and wanted to share the word with me and they offered to do Bible studies that focus only on scripture, nothing else but scripture and it was exactly what I wanted. I wanted, even when I was doing a, researching theology degrees, I was looking for something that focuses only on scripture. I didn't want to read about uh, someone's opinion about the Bible. I wanted to know God's opinion. I wanted to know it from God himself. So that's what they offered me. They're like, we guarantee you, if you do our studies, we guarantee you that you will know what is God's purpose for you and you will understand everything that God wants from us. And I was like, that's a pretty good deal, and it's all for free. <laughs> so who wouldn't want that? Um, so I started studying with them, and their course structure is very intense. So they do studies three times a week, about three hours each time, each class. And the days that they don't have studies, they have revision, they have uh, re-watching of the previous lecture, they have exams, they have um, memorizing verses, they had so many programs involved in their, um, in, their, in their Bible studies. And I did the studies for about 10, the studies go for about eight to 10 months, and after that you become a member. And the, when I was studying it, it was, um, the word was being opened to me, revealed to me in a way that I've never seen it before. It was the most satisfying feeling I had in my entire life. And I felt like this is really God answering my prayer. Like he's really finally giving me what I've been asking him since I was born, basically. And um, it was all good. It, the word was very satisfying. And what they focus on, this Christian group, what they focus on is the second coming. So they preach that the Bible is a book of covenant, that we Christians need to know the conditions of it and how to keep it. And that Jesus is coming very soon, like really soon. And it's our responsibility to fulfill Matthew 24, 14. And uh, that is preach the gospel to all the world so that we can speed the coming of Christ. So they tell you how you can do that. And I thought it is the most beautiful message ever. And I was keen uh, to go all in and to evangelize, to prepare myself for the second coming of Christ. Um, and it was good. It was really good. It was very fulfilling and good just going around and, and preaching to other people, evangelizing and bringing more fruit and, and bringing um, more members into the Christian group. It was really fulfilling and I was happy where I was. I was very content. I was like, finally, I'm doing something useful in my life. I gave up on a lot of things in my worldly life in order to do that. And um, one day, it was during the pandemic, and uh, the church started, decided to evangelize pastors because they thought if you evangelize the pastor, then the whole church converts along with him if he believes in the, in the word that they're preaching. So I was selected as a uh, part of a team of few other people to call pastors and tell them about the, the good news that we're sharing. And Pastor Louis was one of them. And Harlem was over there, she was one of them too. And so was Pastor Amon. Um, we actually had a database of 2,000 plus numbers. So <laughs> we spent endless, endless sleepless nights collecting the data of churches all over Australia and writing down the numbers of the pastors and um, uh, their details. So we would go one by one, 
each, uh, every day and we contact them. First of all, we invite them to prayer gathering because we didn't want to be too upfront that we are, we are, we are trying to evangelize them. <laughs> and uh, so we just pray gathering and then another prayer gathering. And when it didn't work, we're like, okay, fine. We, can you please come to Matthew 24? <laughs> and uh, that's when I, I was talking to him and he, Pastor Louis, he was saying, um, uh, why Matthew 24? What's, what's significant about it? So oh, Matthew 24 is like a mini revelation. And it also connects to Daniel. And as soon as I mentioned Daniel, he was like, oh, you guys know about Daniel? <laughs> you study Daniel? And like, yeah, yeah, because, you know, Jesus says, go and check Daniel uh, in Matthew 24. So that's how it started. And uh, you'd be surprised the number of pastors that, I, that we called and the amount of rejection we received. It was probably a good 95, 96% rejection that we received. Not just rejection. Some of them were actually quite rude and would, they would um, slander and all, say all kinds of things. Um, but because we really were, we believed in the message that we were delivering and we really wanted the people to be saved, and we're like, oh, they're ignorant, they don't know, that's what they're doing, what they're doing. But a few, a few of the people, like yourself, the names that I just mentioned, uh, were kind enough to maintain a friendship, maintain a relationship at least. Um, and to my surprise, some SDA pastors even blocked me. <laughs> They are like, no, nah, no, nah. <laughs> too dangerous. I'm getting poisoned by her. <laughs> and uh, I, was, I later found out that the conference had sent a warning to all the pastors not to, be, um, not to engage with us. So that was, uh, that was interesting. But uh, so that's how, that's how I uh, met Pastor Louis. And it started from there. We, we were, we were um, he, I think it was a second seminar he attended. He told me straight on, Sis, you're in a cult. You need to get out. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you don't understand. You don't have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You need to be. You need to know them first in order for you to see the bigger picture and believe in what we are preaching. Because, it was like, I went through all of them, and it's really hard for somebody to say that this is not true. So, please don't be too quick to judge, and give us a chance. And he did. He did. He gave us a chance. Like, okay, fine. I. He gave me his word that he will watch all 22 Revelation seminars and gave me his opinion after that. Um, but in the process of going through the Revelation seminars, our instructor was also hold, uh, doing a one-on-one -on -one, um, by a scripture debate with him. Talk about some of the questions that he had about the Revelation seminars and also bring up other things. And uh, I was there witnessing because I was the maintainer. I uh, was trying to um, uh, make sure that he doesn't run away. <laughs> so I would attend those meetings. And uh, during those meetings, I could see that what he was preaching, his point of view, it actually held more ground. It was holding more ground, and it had more depth to it. Like, for example, when he was talking about Daniel, I could see that uh, everything that he was talking about was actually linked and could be validated through facts. But whereas what um, the Christian group, by the way, they called SCJ, what SCJ was preaching, um, it just felt like it was a testimony of few people, and that's it. Uh, even though, even though the word was pretty strong and it was pretty powerful, but it's, all of a sudden I'm seeing like, oh, this actually doesn't have any credibility, you know. And that's when the, the doubt in my heart started. But I kind of ignored it because I gave so much of my life and. Uh, my energy, emotion, invested so much into it, I couldn't just walk away from it and say, no, you know what, this is rubbish, I'm just gonna let it go. I, I turned to God again and I kept on praying, God, please like, open my eyes, help me see if this is not where you want me to be, just uh, help me get out of it. And he tried a lot, Pastor <laughs> Louis tried a lot. He would throw so many different kinds of uh, red flags at me so that I can see it, but I was still saying, no, it's still not enough, it's still not enough. I, I've, I gave up a lot to be here, and I, I was there for about two years at that time. And I, could, I always said, no, this is still, I still believe, there's still, like, it can't be, this can't be um, wrong. Until we got to the part where we're talking about um, the divinity of Jesus. So uh, I remember he was telling me at the start that he's willing to let go of all the other differences that, that um, we have, that he was willing to, to put everything else aside of all the wrong things that are in the doctrine. But the one thing that he cannot live with is that SCJ believes that Jesus is not God. He's like, I cannot live with that. 
let me just help you understand why he is God. And he did that. He actually went through a lot, a lot of studies with me to prove to me from the Bible, from scripture, uh, why Jesus is God. And as I was understanding them, I could not stay there any one minute longer. I couldn't. I was like, it can't be, I can't believe that I'm in the wrong place. Because once I understood that Jesus is God, my whole perception about the doctrine completely changed. I'm like, I don't want to stay here. I don't want to worship the wrong God. So I decided to leave at that. And at that time, I think Pastor Louis had been coming to our sessions for about three months. And I wanted to leave, but I couldn't leave straight away because um, I had a lot of friends that I cared about inside that cult that I wanted to save as well. So I stayed around for a little bit and was trying to just uh, ask them questions to make them think about you know, the doctrine so that they can question for themselves so it doesn't look like I'm trying to pressure them to leave. And one of those people was Bianca. <laughs> so I knew Bianca from back in the Catholic days and um, she was the first person I recruited into the cult <laughs> because, because I knew she really loves God and I knew she was willing to, to give up on whatever it takes to follow God. And, and I was right, she did. She, she, she gave up on uh, whatever she could just to, to follow God. And so I couldn't, I felt responsible that I brought her in and I had to take her out. I flew from Melbourne to Perth, um, and uh, thankfully, thank, with a bit of resistance at first, but <laughs> thankfully, like, it didn't take that long until she was like, no, nah, you're right, this is not the truth, I need to leave as well. So both of us, uh, both of us, both of us uh, left and um, did some studies with Pastor Louis and another pastor, Pastor Ben. Um, we, um, we started to learn more about scripture from a different point of view. It was really difficult for us because we had a lot of knowledge already with, from SCJ and to just to leave all that aside and now learn another doctrine, it was really challenging. It, we couldn't just like switch between the two, like wait, but uh, this means that and how come this means that? It was really difficult and it wasn't easy to just jump into another, um, what I call another relationship. <laughs> you know? It was like dumping one and then just uh, jump, uh, going into another relationship. I, uh, we couldn't do it straight away, so we had to, it took us a while, it's been two years now. <laughs> it took us a really long time, but uh, yeah, he's been very patient with us, very, very patient, he's been waiting until the day comes where we get baptized. And um, so for me, what, what I got out of those studies that I had with him, that I was missing from my whole life was the true image of God, and the identity of God, of who he is. See, I was born as a Muslim, and in Islam, Jesus is just a prophet. And when I became Catholic, yes, they believe in the Trinity, but they don't really, nobody really took the time to explain to me what the Trinity was about and why was it important for, to say that Jesus sacrificed himself. They used to say Jesus sacrificed himself and that he died on the cross for us. Oh, it's a big deal. And I would think, well, it's not a big deal. <laughs> He's God. He can do whatever he wants. Because, in, as I said, in Islam, like God is really tired and he just makes whatever, he does whatever he wants. But he's God. He can do whatever he wants. He can kill himself, resurrect himself. No big deal. That's how I looked at it. But little did I know of the depth of that sacrifice that he had for us. And once I understood it, I, I broke down into tears. And I, for the first time in my life, I felt the love of God the way it should be. And oh, it was the most beautiful feeling. And um, until today, until today, I'm so thankful for that. Because, um, in, and, and it was for, while I was at, at, at CJ for a long time, I used to pray for John 17, three. And it was actually the reason why I ended up at CJ because when I read that verse, uh, eternal God is to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom we have sent. I thought, well, I don't think I know God. Like, how can I say that I can have eternal life if I don't know God? And that's why I prayed, God, please reveal yourself to me, reveal your identity to me, that I may know you and know it and can have eternal life. And I had to go through that journey of going through SCJ in order to come to SDA. Um, and learn that identity of Jesus, of the loving God that he is. And seeing my worth in his eyes, 
healed me from so many of the traumas that I experienced as a child in growing up in the war zone. And the, the love that he has for us, I never thought I would be able to understand. I probably still don't to the level that I should be, but I've come a long way. Um, so even though until today, I still believe that life is meaningless. I still do believe that life is meaningless um, because I've gone around and I've tried so many different things in life and nothing was satisfying enough. And I quote this, uh, uh, this quote for you. It's from, I believe, it's a, it's a Catholic saint, Saint Augustine, uh, that I read it while I was Catholic, uh, that, that says, our hearts are restless until it rests in thee. And that's truly what I experienced. My heart was completely restless. I've gone around through different religion, different um, aspects of life, searching for satisfaction, and nothing was satisfying enough until I was with God. And that's what brought me satisfaction. And all the journeys that I went through, God made it work for my own, uh, my own good at the end. Although I gave up a lot when I was in SCJ, but it was for a good cause. And I'm very, very, when I look back, I can see that God was carrying me through all of it, that I may be here today standing before you. And um, yeah, I just um, leave you with one verse that is really close to my heart, and that is Jeremiah 29, 13. If we can, if we can go there and read it together. So Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So I believe I lived through this, um, I had this experience. I was seeking God from a young age and I was seeking God with all my heart. And every word that God, every promise that God gives us in, his, in the Bible, in his word, every promise he fulfills. And I hold him accountable to it. When I saw this, that if I seek him with all my heart, that I will find him, I believed it with all my heart that he will do it. And I'm very thankful that he did. So, so thank you so much. I'll be really quick. I know we're running out of time. <laughs> Um, but a lot of my story is actually very linked to Ella. Um, good morning, happy Sabbath. My name is Bianca, and I'm so glad to be here. I'm from the Philippines, and um, I was raised in Brunei, moved around to Malaysia for studies. After moving around a bit, I settled in Perth nearly 14 years ago um, to pursue my studies. I was born Catholic, but my family um, and I were never really practicing Catholics. If you're Filipino, you know this, 99% of the country is just born Catholic. <laughs> um, yeah. I often wondered who this God is that everyone prays to. So when I was nine, I saw a movie and it was about Moses. And this was my first introduction to God. I remember being so young and so fascinated of how he parted the sea. I'm like, that's so cool. And delivered them out of Egypt. Um, I look back now and I know that, yeah, that was God already trying to talk to me, even though no one, no one, not in my family, no one, not even my mom, not my dad told me about a God. Um, that, then when I turned 12, I hopped on a bus in Brunei and got led to a Catholic church as well. If you know Brunei, it's a 90% Muslim country and there are only roughly three churches and it's majorly the Catholic church. I walked in and I realized that there was this communion they were doing and I wasn't allowed to partake in it and I wanted to belong. So that's when my journey started. I started the communion classes and I started coming to church. From then on, I started joining the youth activities and diligently attending mass every single Sunday together with my friends and my family. 
I seen how going to church changed me slowly. I used to be such an envious, attention-seeking, naughty little kid. <laughs> then listening to God's word and worship songs, I knew, oh no, he's watching me, I'm accountable now. Um, it changed my life. Through this, continued through my university years until I moved to Perth in my first week here. I joined the, the choir straight away, as you guys can see. I love singing. <laughs> I love, love, love singing. So um, because I was in the choir and I was very active, people assumed I knew the Bible well. Um, and I, would, I could quote a few verses here and there, you know, John 3.16 and that all. However, I struggled reading the Bible. If, you, if you're like me, you'd open the Bible. How do you read the book? You start from the beginning, go to the end. I start Genesis, good, we're good, we're good. Exodus, okay, yeah, we're good, we're good. Get to Numbers, and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> then I move, I just skip everything, I'll go to the New Testament, and then I understand it. And then, you know, it's always, it's not how you should read the Bible. So it was a few years ago, Elahi invited me. I love God, I really do. I don't know how or where, even before I knew the word, I just knew God was loving me so much. Um, yeah, it was a few years ago, Bella invited me to a Bible study, changed my whole life. I never used to read the Bible, like you guys know. John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the Bible study emphasized the word being God. That was when I realized that if I didn't know the word, how do I claim to know God and have a relationship with him? My relationship with him prior to that had been very superficial and based more on what I see other Christians do. You know, you put your hand up, you close your eyes, you pray. That's all I used to do. But Jeremiah 17, 10 says, I, the Lord, I search your heart, test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his doing. Long story short, after this Bible study, um, which again ended up being a cult. <laughs> Not so well known here in Australia, um, but I have invited a lot of ex-members here. Um, I left because of doctrinal issues. As soon as Bella told me, do you know, they don't believe that Jesus is God? I'm like, what? I was in there for nearly two years as well, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. To acknowledge and to share that I was part of a cult for two years is honestly quite embarrassing. At first, I asked myself, how did I fall for that? You know, it brought me so much shame and guilt to admit to my friends, to my family. Um, I claimed to have checked the word because in there we would memorize Bible verses day in, day out. Yet, I didn't have a personal relationship with God. It made me realize I amassed a lot of knowledge without a genuine love for our Creator. Becoming like the Pharisees, Yet God, in His mercy, reminded me that my earnest, um, like my earnest search for Him, even if it led me astray for a while, demonstrated that my desire to know Him, He encouraged me to keep that heart and to continue seeking Him. Really quick, guys, don't worry, <laughs> nearly done. Genesis 50, 20 says, As for you, you meant evil against me, but I, God, meant it for good, to bring about people, um, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. What happened to me was not great, but God is so amazing like that. He's able to take what was meant to destroy me. And, you know, after leaving a cult, a lot of people don't really believe in God anymore. Um, but he taught me that I can learn from that experience, take the good and I'll just leave the bad. I look around now and I wouldn't have, have it any other way. Um, there are a lot of ex-members here um, as well. So if it wasn't for that experience, I wouldn't have met those beautiful people who have now become my lifelong friends. <laughs> so when I left the cult, I had to reset, humble myself, learn to surrender to God and trust that if I continue to seek Him, the Holy Spirit will guide me and I realized I knew nothing, but that was okay because I was now connected to Him who knows everything. Jeremiah 29, 13, me and Bella didn't talk about this, but it says here, if you seek me, you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. So nearly, actually three years ago, <laughs> while leaving SCJ, my then ex-husband, my now ex-husband, also left me to be with someone else. By this time, it was his third time um, to be unfaithful, and he has abandoned me. So I had made the choice to get divorced, um, my job back then, you know, leaving a cult and then going through a divorce, um, my job wasn't to have it all answered and to belong, you know, which church do I go to now? Where do I go? Honestly, my, 
God is so good. My job was to just sit in his love and to seek him and trust him and that if I seek him with all my heart, I will find him. I had to start all over again in my life, spiritually, physically, but this time God was asked every step of the way. Um, God not only restored my life, he made it even better than I could have ever imagined. You know, it's so true what it says, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, he knows the plans he has for us, plans to prosper and not harm us, to give us a hope and a future. I now have the best people around me, a God-centered relationship with a God-fearing man, a church that I really truly believe points me back to Jesus all the time. And God was able to do so much with the little three years that I had surrendered to him compared to the 30 years I tried trying to direct my own life. And as, Emma, as Ella mentioned, um, she met Pastor Louis. He graciously gave us the time, despite his busy schedule, to sit down. Um, he sat down with us and talked about the Word of God. So nearly three years later, here we are. I look back and I really see God's hand holding us every single step of the way. What for me I thought was a coincidence, it was God intricately painting my life, my story. That's so personalized, so different, and so beautiful. Pastor Louis and Pastor Ben brought us back to the basics. They help us understand Jesus, the tabernacle, letting the word explain itself, um, and reading it in its context. I was so amazed with the book of Daniel. We know Daniel as well, but a different version. <laughs> and to see how history, God was just talking to us. And I was so amazed with, the, with um, you know, how the Sabbath day was also emphasized and was never changed to Sunday in the Bible. And I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, it was never changed to Sunday in the Bible, only during the time of Constantine. So I realized a lot that what I believed in culturally, um, especially for myself as well, was not biblical. It was just uh, cultural. Um, so I had to check everything again. Um, with the pastors that I, um, thank you so much for never Bible bashing us. <laughs> everything was done with so much love. And at the end of the day, the de decision was always left with us. Hence why it took us three years to get here. <laughs> To my brothers and sisters at Venice, I encourage you all to please do not be complacent. Invite people to your church. I know because I myself, I was once screaming for help. I remember Bella saying, do you know there are other churches that talk about Revelation and Daniel? I'm like, no. <laughs> we thought we, we were the only one that had it. So we were screaming for help to understand his word and to find the truth. When all this while it was, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always until the end of age. <laughs> Nearly done, guys. <laughs> I want to thank all the people of this community, especially the Vic Park Church, who've welcomed me with open arms. I remember walking in here, and the girl right there, she's sitting right next to me, gave me a hug, welcomed me straight away. I'm so grateful for you guys and how much, you know, how Dell as well, with all the Bible classes, truly helped me understand the Adventist life and how much hope we really have. Um, I also want to thank all the ex-SEJ members who are here. I know you guys have been bruised and have been, and you've continued to press on and keep you pursuing your life of faith as it proves to be genuine. Being around you guys have really opened me more to God's faithfulness and his goodness. I know it's hard to trust again after what we went through, but like the word says, don't trust man, only trust God. <laughs> I'd like to make, thank again Pastor Louis for the countless hours of Zooming. I know you don't like to be thank you, always say it's my job. <laughs> but still, thank you, even for the countless of hours of not giving up on Bella, because if you did, I would still be there too. <laughs> to helping her understand, you know, Jesus and his identity, his presence over all. What you did had such a ripple effect that it reached Perth. <laughs> so thank you for your patience and for answering all our questions. We didn't mean to annoy you. We just really want to understand the Bible. Today is my public declaration that if it wasn't for God, I won't be here standing in front of you. If it wasn't for his goodness, mercy, and love, I won't have such a beautiful life filled with so much of God, so much joy, happiness, and peace. It's not perfect, but it's really perfect for me. And it's so exciting because every day I get to see God moving and his spirit lead me to this beautiful faith and this beautiful church. God has been, since the, since the beginning, he's always been choosing me. 
ever since I was in my mother's womb, so it's now about time I finally choose him. Wow, what a story, eh? Bella rang me about two and a half years ago, and <laughs> I knew that she was genuine, and um, I saved her number. I prayed for her, just a little short prayer, because I knew she was a genuine, and this is Amen. Pastor Lewis, picked it up as well. And um, to me, it's really a buke to us as Seven-day Adventists. We're not earnest enough to share Amen. the truth. Amen? Amen. How, how dedicated these people are, mm. what they've been through. And to me, it rebuked me being, not being dedicated enough to share the wonderful truth that we have. Mm. So um, I saved Bella's number. I rang her a couple of years later. I actually heard about Ben. I used to go to a cluster meeting. Ben Tavaro was there before he went back to Victoria. He started telling us about this Sheila that he met and was coming to studies and stuff. I said, Ben, her name wouldn't be Bella, would it? <laughs> he goes, yeah. I said, I know that girl. And so I kept an eye on Bella. We prayed for her and I stayed out of that journey that she was having with Ben. And then just recently, just about two or three months ago, uh, I got a phone call from one of your former friends from West Australia and I thought I'd saved a number and I thought, oh my goodness. But I didn't say that properly and I rang Bella to reach out and say, how do I reach this person? How do I win her? And she started to explain a bit. So it's a miracle that they ended up here as well. We're going to do the bowels now. Yep. I think if you both do it together. Okay. Um, so I think you're going to do it twice. You'll do it back <laughs> in Victoria as well. <laughs> but just for the water, if you could yeah. just do that one thing. Thank you. So we're just, I guess all you have to say is yes. This is like obviously a summary and your certificate is a summary of all the studies we did, the understanding of the Adventist faith. So um, number one, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal saviour and Lord and I desire to live my life in a saving relationship with him. Yes. yes. Beautiful. <laughs> number two, I accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I pledge by God's grace to live my life in harmony with these teachings. Yes. yes. And number three, I desire to be baptized as a public expression of my belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by my personal influence, tithes and offerings, and a life of service. Yes. Thank you. You've heard a wonderful testimony there. I hope you were encouraged and, and very blessed by it. Obviously, uh, the, the kind of thing that um, for someone to have the confidence to ring the, our pastors, <laughs> that means they're very sure. I, I hope that you feel the same about your message as well. You feel confident enough to want to share it. You know? Um, the truth doesn't fear to be investigated. So it's important that we share it and uh, that way we learn more as well. Okay, so I'm going to start with Bianca, the sweet voice Bianca, coming up here. Bianca, um, I will say, it never did it annoy me your questions. I find them actually very insightful, very helpful. And when people ask questions, it means they're actually thinking. They're not just uh, taking it all in, which is really good. And um, so, it's been a, a real joy, and I just want to tell you how privileged it is this moment that we get to, I get to baptize you. So, because I know you love God, and because I know you love Him and want to follow Him, we want to baptize you uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bella, thank you for being that brave one to begin that journey. There's a little thing uh, in this group, a little expression, I guess a, a terminology they use for the person who's looking after the one that they're calling. So this being Bella being the one that rang me, she's considered the, my leaf. And so I'm meant to be the fruit. The leaf is supposed to look after the fruit. And so thank you for being a leaf. And... Uh, and 
But I'm, I'm grateful as well that both of you had um, those humble hearts to listen and engage in that conversation because uh, obviously it means um, you're open to it because of the fact that you love God and are going to follow truth regardless. So thank you for that. And um, as well, one little extra thing as well. Um, Bella did end up marrying my best friend. Um, she's married to my best friend, Christian Diaz. So... <laughs> We're very uh, grateful. Diaz, yeah, waving at you at the front. So, yeah, she sort of took him from me, but that's all right. No, really, like, she kind of brought him fr to me back again because we'd sort of lost touch because of things. And Anyway, anyway, Bella, because of your love for God, it's, and I know how much you love him and the studies that we did and the questions as well, uh, and the, it wasn't just uh, an acceptance straight away. You come back and ask again and check all the corners and the, everything about it that um, I'm grateful to know that you're here for the right reasons. And so because of that, it gives me great privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I just like to make just a quick appeal. Um, if anyone has it in their heart uh, to give their life to Jesus through baptism like this, or even if you want to just start the journey, please speak to Pastor Amon. Uh, you can see he's a man that's willing and, and able to, to be able to do that. Even if, if you don't know Pastor Amon and you're comfortable with someone else here that you know, speak to them as well. Anyone here that you may know that can begin that journey for you even even if you don't make the commitment at least hear it out because there's something really beautiful precious about this adventist message hope you've been encouraged with that amen just want to welcome you into the worldwide church the last day movement amen this is for bianca and you're going to get yours when you get back over the east coast amen and we're gonna have the closing prayer and um and praise god were you blessed today oh, close to tears amen thank you Pastor. loving father we just want to thank you so much for the way that you guide us and lead us lord and uh, we thank you father that both Alan and bianca today come and strengthen the ranks of a remnant church lord mm. and for that we are grateful lord use them their talents their gifts that they have and uh, help us as well uh, to be Encourage now to go out and do the work that we've been called to do. There's many more that are waiting and help us, Father, to be those, uh, to have the privilege to be the ones to bring them to you. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. Amen.